my name is Omar and I am a second year medical student. Before I got into medical school though, I had the pressure of getting A star AA in my A-level exams in order to get in. The reason why this was so daunting was because as soon as I started A-level, I was thrown into the deep end in terms of A-level physics and became so overwhelmed. Despite getting an A-star in GCSE physics, I soon realized that not doing maths A-level and the really difficult calculation and application questions were gonna be a way bigger obstacle than I had realized. In fact, three months before I sat my A-level exams, I was on the BC border, as in like, 2% off a C. But by completely changing how I learned and revised, I was able to get the A I needed. In fact, I was only like 2% off an A star. In this video, I give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to study and revise physics from someone who is not only a professional science tutor, i.e. for biology, chemistry, and physics, but also someone who isn't naturally very good at physics. This video will be split up into four sections, how to learn the content, how to revise the content, perfecting your exam technique, and tackling the practice component. My first tip is to use your specification to structure your notes. This is vital as your teachers will not cover everything you need to know for the exam. For example, they may either forget or simply you will be caught short and not be able to finish the course in time for study leave, which is actually what happened to me in all three of my A-levels, biology, chemistry and physics. Also, what often happens is that your teacher will sometimes go on a tangent and give you way more information than you need. And actually the textbooks themselves have a lot of excess information or convoluted explanations for different topic, which actually you don't need to stress about learning or revising this. My next tip is to create revision resources as you learn each topic. It is simply unreasonable to think that you'll get away with creating your revision resources once you leave for study leave in year 30. During this period, you should have already been consistently doing pass paper questions and even some timed pass papers. So it's so important that as you finish a topic in your lessons that you create the revision resources you need. For example, once you finish electromagnetism, that's it, create your revision resources for electromagnetism. My third tip is to not start off using your textbooks when creating your revision resources. As I said earlier, in physics, your textbooks are filled with an overwhelming amount of information, and this is dangerous for two reasons. For some parts of physics, like mechanics, you do not need to memorize a large amount of information. Doing well and getting good results in mechanics questions comes from practicing mechanics questions and getting to grips with applying equations to different situations that you get given. For other topics in physics though that are more content heavy, such as radioactivity, particle physics, etc., you need to be able to memorize and understand key concepts and facts, not in the convoluted way that they tend to describe in textbooks. So what I suggest is that you use the information you're given in your lessons and get a CGP revision textbook guide, which is what I use and I've seen a lot of other YouTubers recommend it, um, or use the revision guides on physics and math tutor to create concise notes for each specification point. Then if you find a specification point that you don't feel that your lessons the CGP textbook covered thoroughly enough, then you can supplement your revision resource with things that you find in your textbook and also any other information you think that would help you memorize and understand the information that you haven't already written down. My first tip is to not rely on your revision resources. Now, yes, they are essential because there are key concepts and facts that you do need to have memorized and understand in physics for fact and recall questions, etc. However, the trap I fell into actually the whole of year 12 and the half of year 13 was that I'd read my flashcards. What I didn't realize till very late in the course and what actually saved my grades was that actually doing well in physics comes from doing a lot, a lot, a lot of practice questions. So remember that when you're revising for topic tests, your mock exams and your end of year exam, that reading your flashcards is only a very, very like 20% of the amount of revision that you should be doing. And actually, especially when it comes to revising for your A-levels, for the bulk of the months leading up to your exams, you should be doing practice questions and that you're comfortable with the information enough to be able to apply it to different scenarios and that you're comfortable enough with your mathematical ability to be able to manipulate equations etc. My next tip is to always include your corrections in your notes. Any single correction that you get in your homework, a topic test, your mock exams, the practice questions that you do at home, include them into your notes. 
because otherwise you will only be as good as you were when you wrote those notes. If you always make sure to put them in your notes and then you memorize them each time you look at your flashcards, it means that you are improving and that essentially your knowledge is becoming more foolproof because there are less ways that the examiners can catch you at. My next tip is to use Physics and Maths Tutor to obtain a wide range of practice paper questions. As I've said already, Physics A-Level is all about being able to use core concepts and facts and apply them to unfamiliar scenarios and experiments. The more you practice this, the better you'll do. So what I did leading up to my physics exam is that in my revision timetable, I separated everything by topics. And what I'd do is I'd print out the relevant question sets for the topic that I'd revised. I'd spend a small portion of time going over my flashcards and the rest of that time doing the questions that were for that topic. And what's good about physics and math tutor is that they'll have like, not just one set of questions on electromagnetism, they'll have like three. So that way you can practice space repetition, i.e. like one week you can practice electromagnetism and then two weeks later you can do another question set on electromagnetism. My next tip is to practice multiple choice questions. What's good about these is that they are so difficult. Usually you're taught, you know, it's one mark per minute. So if a question is worth four marks and you have four minutes to complete it. However, multiple choice questions, they do catch you out. It sometimes takes about 10 minutes to do one of the questions. So what's good about practicing multiple choice questions is that they cover a large range of different topics. And also you'll be very time pressured. So you will have to learn how to do the questions efficiently. My next tip um, on revising physics is to nag your teachers as much as possible if you don't understand a topic. Now, as I said, I didn't do maths. I was terrible at mechanics. I had come from doing GCSE physics. So when it came to doing radioactivity and capacitors, I had no idea what natural logs are, let alone how to like rearrange them. So I would sit in day in and day out and ask my teacher, can I've been doing these questions at home. Can you tell me, tell me how to do this mechanics question? And I could see him getting visibly annoyed. It does not matter. The embarrassment that I got from that annoyance isn't anywhere near the joy I got from getting into medical school. So I'd really suggest that you nag your teachers as much as possible. Um, and by seeing them do the question, then you can start to get an innate feel of the process that you need to go through in order to answer the question. In my last tip, I'm gonna be showing you an exemplar of revision timetable to help you understand how you need to space out your revision and your practice of questions leading up to the exam. So here is an ideal revision timetable I've created, which is based on what I did when it came to my levels, but also what I wish I would have done. Um, I suggest that you guys follow this when it comes to year 13, obviously modify it so it's specific to you and when your exams are, um, and I know that Obviously during COVID times, the dates of exams, etc., may be a bit different, but let's take a look. So after you've completed your mocks, you want to essentially be finishing all your revision notes for the whole specification by the time the Easter holiday begins. And this means that if any of your subjects, they haven't finished the content by the time the start of the Easter holidays begin, you're going to have to essentially learn it yourself because this means that you'll be able to have the most practice in those subjects, even if your teachers don't manage to cover that content in time. So from the start of the Easter holiday to the start of the summer term, so during the Easter holidays, you want to be learning the content. So going through your flashcards, um, talking through the information out loud, writing it on a whiteboard from memory. Then from the start of the summer term, i.e. late April to the beginning of exams, you want to be regularly doing space repetition using past paper questions for each topic. So what I mean by this is that you want to do a set of questions on radioactivity and then do another question pack on it a few weeks later because that way you're continually going back to the topic so you're not forgetting about it and you're able to apply the information that you've learned from corrections, etc. again. So over time, you're getting better and better. Then near the time of your exams, you want to start doing timed past papers, um, but you don't want to do these too early because if you do them too early, then you won't have any past papers to do by the time it comes around to exams. Um, you want this basically to be right up to the point of your exam so you can put yourself in the environment of that exam so you can get used to it and know how to bring all the knowledge you've been revising over the past couple of months together. You really want to make sure to mark this strictly and learn from your corrections. So write it into your notes and every time remember to learn these corrections because that way there's less the examiners can ask you um, which you'll get wrong and that way you're getting better each time you do a set of questions. 
My first exam technique tip is to write down your calculations neatly and in order. Examiners will be looking for specific steps in your solutions in order to give you the mark. So the easier you make it for them to spot, the less likely they are to miss those marks. And believe me, they miss marks all the time. As in, initially I got A, A, A in my A-levels and after getting it remarked, I got A star, A star, A. So they do miss marks and you wanna make sure that they are not likely to. And even more importantly, when you are checking back to your answers in the exam, you can clearly see where you made a mistake. My second exam technique tip is to do the multiple choice question last. As I said already, they are very time consuming. There will be, well, in my paper, there were 20 of them. They take way longer than 20 minutes. Often I'm like pulling my hair out because it's taking me like 10 minutes to do one question. So it is better that you do the questions which are one mark per minute before, which are the main chunk of the exam. And then at the end, see if you have time to do multiple choice questions. Because honestly, if you miss out five of them, it could have taken you 20 minutes, but in reality, you're only losing five marks. Now, in terms of the practical component, my first tip is to get a practical revision guide if possible. I did AQA and for AQA, they have a physics um, practical component guide and this gives you the details of each required practical. If not, then you can find practical revision guides on physics and maths tutor, which are very, very helpful. Second, what I suggest you do is that you create flashcards for the required practicals. Write down the methods, write down the controlled, independent and dependent variables. Write down how to derive any equations if you need to. That way, if there is a six mark on how do you carry out the, this experiment, um, you know straight away what you need to write. Thirdly, if you don't understand uncertainties, if you don't understand how a how different apparatus works, then look it up. Don't risk it. I nearly did this, um, but this will absolutely destroy your grade in paper three, which I think is the one with the practical component stuff. And finally, once again, do as many practice questions as you can, because the more practice you get at applying key concepts and facts to experimental data and questions, the more innate and second nature this will be to you when it comes to the exam. Now, I hope this guide inspired you to make some changes or introduce some new techniques into your study and revision techniques. And I hope you feel more reassured in knowing what you need to do to achieve that A star in physics. I really believe that if I had had the same study technique that I'd had like three months leading up to my exam, from from day one I would have gotten that A star seeing as I was so close to it so make sure to get that head start that I didn't best of luck with your A levels if you found this video helpful let me know in the comments and make sure to like subscribe and turn on the post notifications and as always see you in the next one